Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack, and in this video, you're gonna learn about eight massive changes coming to the Elder Scrolls Online as early as next week on PC and one week after on consoles. That's right, we're talking about the Flames of Ambition DLC and every single change you need to know to be ready for this brand new update to ESO. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about passives first and how a lot of those are making some significant changes to the game, uh, starting with update 29. I want to jump to the weapon skills here and let's talk about dual wield passives first. So some really big changes here in the twin blade and blunt passive. If you're familiar with this, this basically gives you different effects based on what type of weapons you're holding, whether it's daggers, axes, maces, swords. Most of these have changed. So when we look at axes, Axes now increase your critical damage and critical healing done by 4%. Maces now give you a flat armor penetration boost by 1650. Each sword increases your weapon and spell damage by 142. And each dagger increases your critical chance rating by 812. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that none of these are specific to stamina builds. These are now both beneficial for stamina and magicka builds. You can see with axes, you get critical damage. Okay, that's not weapon critical anymore, it's crit damage. You also get the crit healing done. Now that's going to affect both magicka based damage and stamina, so that's actually pretty cool. You can now use these weapons on magicka builds. Look at maces, you get armor penetration. Swords, you get weapon and spell damage. Dagger gives you crit chance. So we will start seeing things like dual wield dagger magicka builds in the Flames of Ambition DLC. It's a pretty interesting option. So make sure you take a look at these and understand what they are. I will also note that axes got the biggest change and I don't think they're as useful anymore. Might be some additional balancing needed for axes, uh, but you probably won't offhand an axe anymore because you'll notice also that the bleed effect is gone. When we look at two-handed, we have similar changes here in the heavy weapons passive. As you would expect, swords increase your weapon and spell damage. Axes, you get the crit damage, crit healing, and maces for the armor penetration. Also, side note, something else interesting here is bows could be used by Magicka builds as well. This gives you critical chance now. Um, that's going to work on Magicka and stamina. So that's it in terms of weapon passives that I thought were interesting. We'll talk about armor passives in a little bit detail uh, later on, but let's look at some of the guild passives that have changed, specifically Fighter's Guild. I thought this was interesting. So Banish the Wicked, you might know this as giving you, I think it was nine ultimate whenever you killed an undead werewolf or daedra. This is now shifted to three ultimate per kill, and that's on any type of enemy. So not just undead anymore. This could be a spider, a wolf, any mob in the game can give you three ultimate, but I want you to pay attention to all the text on the passive. It now says with a fighter's guild ability slotted, this was never the case in the past. You could get this ultimate without having any fighter's guild abilities on your bar, which meant it worked well for magicka builds as well as stamina builds. Now you need to slot the fighter's guild skill. So, you know, I doubt that magicka builds will have room for fighter's guild abilities. Uh, essentially a useless ability to get this passive. So that's something to keep in mind um, if you are running a Magicka class for sure. Now here's another change I thought was really interesting. If you play a werewolf, when we come down to our werewolf passives and take a look at the Savage Strength passive, uh, this used to give us a lot of armor. I believe it was up to 10,000 additional physical and spell resistance. This now has been completely changed. It now gives us major resolve. So that is the major armor buff in ESO, which you'll get from sets like Mighty Chudin or like a, a Warden might buff you with major resolve. So keep this in mind if you play a werewolf. You no longer get the extra 10,000 uh, armor here, and this will not stack. Uh, so you're basically limited to just major resolve, and this is going to make werewolf builds a lot less tanky overall. All right, so next up we have some new status effects to talk about. Actually, three brand new status effects were added to the game uh, for the Flames of Ambition DLC. So we have a physical damage status effect. This is called Sundered, that's the other name for it. And this does instant damage and applies minor breach. So that reduces your target's armor by a little bit for four seconds. 
Then we have a magic status effect. So if your attack does magic damage, not cost magicka, but it actually says on the tooltip does 5,000 magic damage. Then you have a chance to apply this status effect. The other name for it is overcharged. And that applies minor magicka steal. So that basically restores some magic back to you uh, every time you do damage to the target. And then finally, bleed is now specified as another status effect. Uh, so this does bleed damage over four seconds and applies the minor mangle status effect, which I believe reduces their max health. The name for this status effect is also hemorrhaging. So there you go, three new status effects added for the Flames of Ambition DLC. Just to show you what this looks like, let's apply some physical damage to a target dummy and there you go. That's the minor breach status effect, so that's reducing the target's armor. And again, any physical damage type has the uh, chance to proc this. All right, so this next one seems like a fairly small update, but I think it's actually pretty good. And this has to do with housing. Basically, if you decide to like travel to your house in order to get to another destination, like let's say to the bank or to a main town, but you're using your house as like the gateway to that next area, well, now when you go to travel to your home, you can click here and now you have the option to travel inside the home or to travel outside. So this will basically save you from loading inside the house if all you wanted to do was fast travel to a nearby location. All right, so another big change that I need to show you is going to be the change to character stats. Essentially what's going to be happening is a lot of the stats and progression that was found in champion points, like the passive stats that were added, the more champion point ranks you have, those have been moved now into the basic character stats for, for all characters in ESO. As you level up, you're gonna be getting a lot more stats from level one to level 50. So I just wanna show you the, uh, the new stats compared to the old stats on live servers. You can see here on the right, these are gonna be the new stats, you guys. And this, I can show you real quick. This is without any gear. So I don't have any gear equipped. This is without any active champion point bonuses. This is just blank character template stats past level 50, okay? 12,000 max stamina. No food buff either, by the way. No food on my character. 12,000 max stam. 17,000 max health. Uh, I do have, I believe, one health buff from being a sorcerer. And I have my High Elf Magicka, Max Magicka buff. So I'm at 15,000 Max Magicka. But you can see, especially when you look at the health, this is basically about double of what we would see on a live server. Over on the left side, I have my live server stats. I have the same Sorcerer buffs. So between like eight to 9,000 Max health on live servers right now, you're going to be over 16,000 Max health. And that's without any food buff. When you add the food buff or a food slash drink buff, you can see we're gonna have a lot more base stats to play around with. Also notice the spell and weapon damage is increased. Also, I don't have a weapon e equipped and I have base spell damage and weapon damage on my character. This is pretty, pretty strong. Uh, spell critical and weapon critical additionally went up. So I know a lot of changes are going on, but this is actually a good change both for new players, for experienced players, uh, even if you have, you know, fewer amounts of champion points, you're going to still have more stats to work with now, and you're going to have more options in terms of how you want to set up your build. And speaking of stats, another quick update here that you need to be aware of is going to be the new advanced stats UI. This is going into the base game, both for PC and console. A couple different ways we can see this. So on your main character sheet, you should see a new line for penetration stats. That is new, that doesn't require any add-ons. But then you will have a button here for advanced stats. And again, this shows up on the console UI as well. And so in the advanced stats, you have things like your core stats. So how much it costs for block, break free, sprinting, sneaking, dodge rolling, how much block mitigation you have, how much your resistance percentages are. There's just so much uh, information here. And obviously I'm on a template character, so I don't have a lot of values uh, built into my character yet, but this is just gonna give you a lot more information moving forward. And especially on consoles, you never had access to this because you didn't have the add-ons in order to see it. 
So this is going to be a nice addition to the game for sure. Okay, next up I want to talk about armor, specifically passives and how the different armor types are changing how you're going to play moving forward in ESO. This is actually pretty big overall. So when we jump into any of our different armor types, we have the usual passives, but now we have penalties and bonuses, okay? So uh, not every type is the same. For example, medium armor only has bonuses, but light armor has bonus and penalty. Heavy armor has bonus and penalty. The reason why medium armor just has the bonuses, you can think of this as like the default average type of armor, and then things are going to adjust from there. For example, if we look at heavy armor, uh, heavy armor has bonuses where you reduce damage taken, increase the amount of damage blocked, increase the, the amount of damage you can do with bash, reduces damage taken while immune to crowd control. So all of that makes sense. And then when we look at penalties, they actually take increased damage from magical attacks. They reduce the movement speed of sprint, increase the cost of roll dodge, increases your detection area radius. So most of these you know, make sense. You can see the, the bonuses and penalties are fairly small, so it's not gonna have a huge impact, but there will be some changes that you might consider for your build. Now, even more changes were added to the actual passive abilities here in each skill line, and most of these now no longer require five pieces to activate the passive. Uh, for example, concentration, this gives you spell penetration, you used to only be able to get this with five pieces or more of light armor. Now it's going to give you additional spell penetration for each piece of light armor. Same thing with, with spell prodigy. Same thing with the prodigy passive. You get more critical chance the more pieces of light armor you have equipped. So this is actually really good in terms of flexibility and creating different build styles with different amounts of armor. I don't think 511 is going to be as popular as it's been in the past, especially for Magicka builds you're gonna see more like seven light armor builds because of how these changes like Prodigy and Concentration now give you more stats the more uh, armor pieces you're wearing. Same thing in medium armor, you guys. Agility, this used to give you a flat 15% weapon damage bonus. Now this scales up with however many pieces of medium armor you have. So you need to wear seven pieces of medium armor to get the maximum amount of weapon damage possible. Now you have a full uh, separate guide on this. I'll have that linked in the description down below as well. Check that out if you want more information. Let's move on. Next up, let's talk about race changes being added to the game in update 29. Nearly every race in the game has gotten some update of some kind this patch. This includes changes such as high elves getting weapon damage, orcs getting spell damage, Argonians getting an extra line of max stamina, even Imperials got a buff this patch. So basically there are gonna be some updates to your race now in Flames of Ambition, regardless of which ones you play. I'll have a link down in the description for the full guide I released just this week covering all the race changes in detail. I also have a written guide over on my website. So go check out those to see more if you haven't already. And that brings us to the final major update coming out in the Flames of Ambition DLC. That being the complete champion point rework, the CP 2.0 system. And man, there is so much going on in the new system. Too much to explain in this video. So I will have a link down in the description if you want to check out my full review guide to the CP 2.0 system. But essentially, all your points will be respect, and you'll have three brand new trees to invest them into that being craft, warfare, and fitness. The basic focus of each tree is you have obviously craft in the craft tree along with some utility. In the warfare tree, you have your offensive and some defensive and healing capability. And then fitness is mostly uh, survival oriented. Overall, I'd say the system is not perfect, but it's definitely a big upgrade over what we had previously. Lots more possibilities from now and far into the future. Keep in mind also that they raised the cap from 810 all the way to the maximum, which is 3,600. So yeah, we're going to have these uh, champion points to play around with for quite a while. And also, I like that the system is expandable and flexible so they can add these sub-constellations. 
whenever they want. They can make the trees more dense, more interesting, more engaging. So I think it is a great system and I will be updating all my builds obviously to uh, fit into the CP 2.0 system. So with that being said, that basically covers everything you need to know for the new Flames of Ambition DLC coming out next week. I hope you guys found this helpful. Of course, if you did, don't forget to crush that like button. Let me know what you think about all these changes down in the comments section below. What's your favorite change so far? And if there's any changes you're not looking forward to, I'd be interested in reading about those as well. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder that we are still in the process of rolling out members-only content right here on HTM. This includes exclusive members-only videos, including build videos for ESO, like you're watching right now in the background. This is our Grind God, the Cataclysm build for the Stamina Sorcerer class, focused on killing groups of enemies as quickly as possible and earning as much experience as possible if you do want to extend your uh, champion point ranks here for CP 2.0. This is a video you're not going to find anywhere else on my channel or on my website. It's an exclusive video for our tier two membership. That's our elite squad right here on YouTube. So if you're interested in any of the members only content, just click on that join button down below for more information. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.